Males can lay a couple hundred to several thousand eggs within this period, and then the larval stage, where these caterpillars are going through a, a process of munching on the tissues of these different plants to obtain as many nutrients as possible to progress through these six instars or molting stages to reach the adult stage. Why this is important is that these caterpillars are considered generalists. What this means is that they feed on a wide variety of different plants. The common name that most people would know this caterpillar by is the corn earworm or the cotton bollworm. And because of this process of them chewing the tissue of the plant, they, they cause billions of dollars of damage to our crops annually, and that's a problem for the farmers. Now, the, pl the plants, on the other hand, aren't just, aren't just there accepting um, the fact that the caterpillars are chewing them. They do recognize when herbivores attack. And because of this, there are two different, there are two different hormones which are released, salicylate and jasmine. The salicylate hormone, right here, is specific for pathogens, such as bacteria and viruses. Viruses. The jasminate, on the other hand, is specific to, for the herbivores. And what happens is that when one is turned on, the other one is repressed, and when the other one is expressed, it's vice versa. There is, though, crosstalk between the two, so when, the pa like if you have the pathogen pathway turned on with the salicylate, and all of a sudden the plant recognizes that, no, it's not a pathogen, it's actually the herbivore, it can quickly switch between these two different hormones and recognize when the, um, when, and actually turn on defenses then against the caterpillar itself. This is important because the, the plant is trying to repress as much nutrition that the caterpillar can get from its tissues. And if it's doing so, the caterpillar will be slowed down from progressing through those instar or molting stages and therefore not reach the adult stage where they can lay more, more of the eggs, therefore reducing the amount of generations that we could see within the moth. So for my experiment, we hypothesized that the caterpillars will most likely grow at different rates depending on the different tissues and the different plants that they are feeding upon. We also assume that because of these uh, different growth rates, that it could be dependent upon which of these hormones and the defenses then turned on in the plants are. So the third one we thought is, if we look at the actual gene expression within the caterpillars when they're feeding upon these different plants and if they've had the defenses turned on, the genes will be, the uh, expression will vary between the, um, the tissues that are fed upon. So to, do the, to uh, check these hypotheses, we set up two different bioassays. The first one was a little bit specific where we went and had the actual hormones sprayed upon the plants to turn on these defenses and the caterpillars fed upon them. The second one, we then expanded the experiment to not do the hormones, but instead see what would be the differences between a multitude of plants that are common to crops in our state. And then at the end of this, after checking to see what the weight differential between the initial and final weight was of the caterpillar, we then looked at the gene expression for specifically the digestive and growth genes. To start this experiment, we had to make sure that we grew the plants within either a growth chamber or outside for a period of 45 days. And in doing so, we watered them twice a week with a generic plant food. For the caterpillars themselves, we obtained them and then grew them on artificial diet for, until they reached their fourth or fifth instar. And then we would separate them into individual cups to actually have them feed upon the plant material. So for the first bioassay, what we did is we worked with the Solanaceae, which, are, which most people would know as the family that are nightshades. The reason why we worked on this is that their defenses, when they're turned on, usually deal with toxins. As in the case of tobacco, nicotine would be the defense that would be fighting against the, the caterpillar. So what we did is we set up the plants where we then sprayed a certain set with the jasmine to turn on the defenses for the herbivores, and we then uh, sprayed other ones with salicylate to turn on the defenses for the pathogens, and we also had a control group and the uh, artificial diet group. We then had 20 caterpillar samples per treatment. We initially weighed them to get their uh, starting weight, and then we also then we fed them for a period of 72 hours, in which then we did a final weight before flash freezing them to try to, to flash freeze them for the use of the RNA extraction. In RNA extraction, we homogenized or ground up the caterpillar tissue, then extracted the RNA using the triazole method, 
And upon doing that, we checked purification with nanodropping. We then replicated the, the RNA into cDNA and used qPCR to see the gene expression for a multitude of different genes. And the genes we used were specific to growth and to uh, digestive genes found within the caterpillar itself. For this, we used four different replications per treatment, and we extended the cycles to 50, so that way we could see the actual overall expression of the different genes in case we saw some that took a little bit longer to express. And what we found was this. Now, when we read this, we have our treatments along the bottom, and then we see the mean average in the case of this graph of the weight between the initial and final weight of the caterpillar that it put on. And what we saw was really interesting because we found out that when we looked at this, for the tomatoes, we saw drastic growth, chain, uh, growth compared to the caterpillars that fed on tobacco. We also noticed, in this case, this bioassay because of the hormones, we saw that the caterpillars that fed on plants with the salicylate, which is specifically, specifically the defenses, uh, the hormone turning on defenses for pathogens and not to recognize the herbivores, we saw greater weight put on by those caterpillars. When we then looked at the digestive genes themselves, with the uh, and, uh, digestive genes themselves, we also noticed that there was a difference between the caterpillars that fed upon the plant tissue itself and the caterpillars that fed upon the artificial diet. This was uh, obvious in the uh, aminopeptidase and the trypsin, which are genes that are turning on proteases. And this is to fight back against the plant defense of protease inhibitors, which stop the caterpillar from obtaining the nutrients and the proteins from the plant. And when we look at the artificial diet compared to these plants, when we read this, we again see that we have the treatment on the bottom. And when we talk about relative fold change, we're talking about the more we see the bar, uh, the higher the bar is, the greater the expression of the gene. And so when we saw this, for the aminopeptidase and the trypsin, for both these protease uh, genes, we saw a greater increase within the plant for the expression compared to the artificial diet, which was just plain nutrition. It was nutrients and uh, proteins for them. We then saw this also occur in lipase, which is an enzyme that is for pre-digestion of lipids. And yet again, we see that the, the um, plants themselves had to have greater expression compared to the artificial diet. Then, in the case of glucose oxidase, glucose oxidase is a chemical that the caterpillars release to suppress the defenses of the plant themselves. We note that the artificial diet, the caterpillars that fed upon that, didn't have to express this chemical as much as those caterpillars which fed upon the plants themselves. It then led us to this series of these two genes. And what happens is that when we, when we look at the juvenile hormone, this is a hormone that is released to keep the caterpillar within the stage of the larva. And what happens, if we notice, is that compared to the control diet, the plants, when the caterpillar is fed upon them, they were releasing, the caterpillar was releasing this hormone to keep themselves within this larval stage so they could actually try to obtain more nutrients and put on more weight before reaching the adult stage. This then, in turn, when we look at the ectaisin oxidase, which is an enzyme which helps with molting, getting between these different instar stages, we see a complete reverse, where with the control diet, we see that the caterpillar is expressing this gene to molt very quickly and progress to the instars to reach the adult stage, compared to the caterpillars which fed upon the plants. They are being repressed. They're trying to keep in the larval stage longer to put on more weight before progressing to the adult stage. So if we looked at a single plant, in this case we use tomato, and compare the differences between the hormones, we see the same thing occurring. We notice with the aminopeptidase and the trypsin, we have a lower end on the control compared to those which had the hormones sprayed upon them. A lot more of the proteases are having to be expressed to fight off the protease inhibitors, trying to gain these nutrients. We then look at the lipase and the juvenile hormone. In this case, you notice that we're using just the tomato plants. There isn't an artificial control here. We see that in both cases, they are, the caterpillars are expressing these genes, which are trying to help them break down as, many, as much of the uh, tissue to gain nutrients from it, and also staying in the juvenile stage longer so they can obtain the weight. Therefore, we decided to do our second bioassay. And for that, instead of doing the hormones, we decided to expand upon a multitude of different plants, adding in the corn, leaf, and the uh, soybean leaf, also adding in 
the tomato fruit, which will have a high nutritional value also. Same as before, initial weight, 72 hours of feeding, and then a final weight was taken after that. And what we found in this case is when we looked at it, yet again, high nutritional value, you see a lot more weight put on by the caterpillars compared to low nutritional values such as the corn leaf, which didn't put on much weight, as well, uh, the caterpillars didn't put as much weight on. Again, looking at aminopeptidase and trypsin, we have a low amount in the control and the tomato fruit in both cases compared to the leaf. The caterpillar is having to express these, these genes to obtain the nutrients. In the lipase, yet again, control in tomato compared to the leaves of everything else. Same thing with the glucose oxidase. With the high nutrition, you do not have to try to fight off the defenses of the plant, and therefore you can put more into the molting stage. So, in conclusion, what we found through this experiment is that there were noticeable weight differences between the caterpillars that fed upon these high nutritional value, point, um, high nutritional um, feeds, such as the diet that had the artificial diet and then the fruit itself. Those caterpillars which didn't, they had a lower weight gain and then and stayed in a larval stage longer. Because of this, we saw that also, depending on the hormone, if the salicylate, which was for the pathogens, was turned on, the caterpillars could put on more weight because the, path, the hormone was specifically turning on defenses for pathogens and not recognizing that the hormones were turned on, that the uh, herbivore was attacking. And then finally, we, what we saw is that when we looked at the genes, we saw that the, the expression for the caterpillars in the case of the lipids and the juvenile hormones and the proteases, we saw greater uh, expression in that because the caterpillar is trying to maintain itself in the larval stage to break down more of the protein, uh, break down more of the proteins and nutrients, compared to the artificial diet and the um, and the fruit itself, and this is important because if a plant, if the caterpillar is staying within that stage longer, it is not progressing to the adult stage to then have its ability to lay more eggs, and the plant is having the ability to reduce the amount of generations that the caterpillar has to lay more eggs. So, as you always, I'd like to thank everybody that did assist me with this uh, project at Western Illinois University, especially since um, I was in the Musser lab. It helped out a lot, everybody that was assisting me. And finally, are there any questions?